story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Court TV Primetime News. I am Frank Omalape. Our top stories tonight. President Golok Jonathan says he is not bashed by reports written about him in recent times, insists he is not desperate to remain in office. Also in this program, Igbos in the 19 northern states and the FCT endorsed the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Muhammad Buhari. And our combined team of security forces raid home of suspected leader of the terror group Boko Haram in Kaduna, Nabwai. And outside Nigeria, millions of people across the world experience solar eclipse of the sun. Thank you for joining us tonight. President Golok Jonathan says he was not desperate to continue in office in spite of his sustained campaign for a second term. This insisted it's why he's not bought bothered by things that had been said or written about him in recent times. Jonathan spoke how the public launch of a book, The People's Choice, the story of President Golok Jonathan in Abuja. President Jonathan will note that the book provides a near accurate narrative of his life story, promised to write the most accurate when after leaving office. My second message is to all of us, especially those of us who are politicians, that for all of us who want to serve, we should be ready to serve, but we should not be desperate to serve our people. Sometimes we ask me, Mr. President, from what we read, from what we see, from we see you still smiling and you look so roughly. Yes, nothing will really rough on me because I am willing and ready to serve, but I'm not desperate to serve. And if all of us who want to hold offices from the least, then the council of the ward, representing the ward in the local government council, or the chairman of the council, or a member of the state house of assembly, or a member of the house of rep, senate, governor, or the president, if all of us are always ready and willing to serve our people, but we're not desperate, in that uh, mission, then of course Nigeria will be a better place for all of us. But I have the opportunity to browse through the first book, and uh, I must say you've done a very good job. And I noticed you even brought back some history, uh, some discussion that we had between Ojuku and myself, the Aburi uh, Agreement. Oh. I was fascinated by that yeah. because I can assure you uh, that meeting was really not to commit ourselves uh, to, uh, to anything that we do not have chance uh, to thoroughly discuss until we return to Nigeria. And the whole thing, you know, was this. Um, it was to bring the eyes to allow all of us, the military leaders at the time. 
Meanwhile, the organizers of the book presentation have said the event has nothing to do with politics, even though it is coming just over a week to the presidential election. They claim that the time This book of the had been in production just for about one and a half years. The process of producing a book, for me, this is the first time I, I was involved in coordinating the publication of a book. And it took one and a half years uh, to get this book produced. Uh, the timing is, has to do with the production, and when the book was ready, it's just a coincidence it's coming at the time. And for me, it's the right time that the book is coming at this time. Somebody asked a question now, you are recording. Um, a lot of people have come to realize that we have a president who is compassionate, who has feelings for fellow Nigerians, and who has committed his entire life to serve this country, to pursue the well-being and welfare of the Nigerian people. A president who is passionate about education, a man who realizes that it is only by educating the Nigerian people that they will also have the opportunity of leading this country. And now barely eight days to the 2015 general elections, another group with the name of Dual Frontlines has urged the Nigerian youth to safeguard their future by voting for the PDP presidential candidate, President Kolob Jonathan, for the second term in office. Under State Governor Lucia Gumi Miku says the achievements of Jonathan in the education sector and youth empowerment speak volume of a leader who is interested in the nation's future. He stressed that Buhari has nothing to offer the Nigerian youth because his past government did nothing to support the growing Nigerian generation. We'll bring you that report in our subsequent uh, bulletins. Away from that now, the umbrella body of eagles in northern Nigeria has expressed its resolve to back the candidacy of the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Muhammad Buhari. This is contrary to the position of the mainstream Igbo social cultural group, Ohanese Indigo, which is supporting the re election bid of President Golub Jonathan. The leadership of Igbo Delegate Assembly were at the APC presidential campaign headquarters in Abuja to declare support for Buhari. We do not want to be disenfranchised because our people in the north are planning to run to the East for safety. Security is the greatest need. On the good amounts, the federal government will need for compensation for lost lives and properties. Now, no one is going to have a to produce the president of the world that should happen to you. We are here to say to you, sir, that Nigeria is better than any individual. We are here as a people who have contributed so much to the social economic development of Nigeria to say that it's easier for us to work with you. It's better for us to work with you because of what you stand for. Because we want to live the environment better than we met it. And we want posterity to be better. And out there, uh, Progressive uh, People's Congress has advised the people of South East Nigeria against putting all its eggs in one political basket. This according to the party chairman, John Odigi Oyego, is because the region has not had enough benefit to justify its long-standing support for the People's Democratic Party. He said this in Abuja while commending the Igbo Delegate Assembly for endorsing the APC presidential candidate. You are some of the most dynamic people in this country. The most aggressive in a positive sense. Business people. Nobody travels and settles the length and breadth of this country unless it believes in the nationhood of that country. And you have all planted yourselves in every single corner of this nation. So the survival of this nation 
the prosperity of this nation must be of concern to all of you. For 16 years, the PDP has been in office. What we have learned from that is that they have taken the nation for granted. For 16 years, the Igbos have almost 90% supported the PDP. You are being taken for granted. Because I don't know which of you here can name things that have specially come to you because of 16 years of loyalty. You have put yourself in a position where they will say, ah, Ndigo, don't worry, they were there with us, it doesn't matter. They will come to us who are accusing them to come and bribe us to support them. Yes. They don't need to bribe. Right. They don't need to do anything for you. You are already there. So why are you playing that kind of politics? Look at the Southwest. Southwest is 60-40. Why must the Igbo nation be 95-5? Why? Why is your bargaining power? So when the PDP wants funds for campaign, they will go and give PDP one million. But they do come to us to and give us 250 million. That is the kind of politics that we want the ego race to. Please, please, please don't put your eggs all in one basket. <laughs> The independent Democrat has announced claims of an alliance with the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Muhammad Buhari. The party said this in reaction to a report in national newspaper that included DID as one of the 13 political parties to have agreed to back the APC presidential candidate. Independent Democrats said in a statement issued by its national director of operations, GDK, that it stands on a position of adopting President Golub Jonathan as president presidential candidate. He can note that the party had on December 11, 2014 adopted President Golok Jonathan at a national convention monitored by the Independent National Electoral Commission. And in what has been tagged as Nigeria's most keenly contested presidential election, it is perhaps the first time the answer to the question is dicey. The competition has recently narrowed down to the two main political gladiators, incumbent President Gulag Jonathan of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and General Mohamed Buhari of the All Progressive Congress, APC. This time, the debate was not in the studio, but on the street where correspondent Emmanuel Ajayi engaged two Nigerians holding two different opinions. Where they are focused on the body that uh, is the old man, is this it? They are first started that he didn't have the cast certificate, he didn't have this, he didn't have that. There is not in, are they not in Nigeria in 2003 when he was contesting for president in 2003? The same thing in 2007, the same thing in 2011. They are not verified, are they not verified their certificate by data that that's what more? I to, well, yeah, 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 listen. What I want you to understand is that Jonathan is the best government I've ever seen. He's being a young man and he can lead us to anywhere we want. Buhari has nothing to offer us. He's forging his resort. Part of it, he has nothing to offer Nigeria. And I keep saying this to everybody. Jonathan is the man that, can, that we can trust. All citizen came with a chronicle of septuagenarian politicians in history, both in Nigeria and beyond who contested 1979, for presidency. When Nambi Azikwe contested for president, he was 75 years, in, he was 75 years old. I never really did it when I was contested for president. He was at 80, 84 years in uh, uh, age. And even Mandela was around 60, uh, 76 years when he became president. Even Rega in America, he was 70 years. Even uh, uh, if we are talking about uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln was around 80 something years when he became, became uh, uh, president of America. And he contested for almost more than 20 times. You can watch more of that on uh, one of our programs on Court TV News, The People, a program that takes the studio to the street. You're still watching Court TV Primetime News. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more stories after this time out. Stay with us. Vote for change. Vote NBC. When I was younger, I can remember a time when corruption was a thing of shame. 
I dream of a future where we won't have challenges with electricity. I'm voting for Buhari because he understands our past and our history. I dream of a time where we're going to have free and free and honest in election. I remember a time when one naira was equal to one pound. I am voting for Buhari because we need change for a brighter future. Nigeria! Dose of Scott's Emotion, which combines omega 3, calcium, vitamins A and D, supports the healthy development of your child's brain and body. Scott's Emotion promotes active minds and strong immunity in growing children. New Scott's Orange Flavor Multivitamin Emotion. Election time, don't come. Time to vote, don't come. Your vote tonight, oh, oh. For the consolidator, Akiumi Ambode, for governor of Lagos State. Vote APC. This is Court TV Primetime News Live from our Lagos studios. For a reminder of our top story now, so if you just joined us. President Golok Jonathan says he's not bothered by reports written about him in recent times, insists he's not desperate to remain in office. And Eagles in the 19 Northern State and the FCT endorsed the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Muhammad Buhari. For more information, you can also reach us on our social media platform. It's facebook.com forward slash court TV news. And our Twitter handle at court TV news NG. And for live streaming, you can log on to youtube.com forward slash court TV, leave a space, the news. And now the United Progressive Party says it will not accept another shift on the date of the election. This according to the presidential candidate of the party, Chekwa Sokoria, is because there is no basis for a further shift in the election date on the grounds of insecurity. He also backed plans by the Independent National Electoral Commission to use card readers for accreditation of voters. The UPP is for the election to be held as uh, scheduled. And the uh, UPP will uh, urge uh, INEC or even the government of the day, the PDP government, not to uh, try any further provocation of the Nigerian people. The international community, all well-meaning nations in, of this world who are practicing democracy have cautioned Nigeria not to do anything that will uh, bring a bigger problem than uh, the one we are trying to solve. Um, we opposed the postponement in the first place for this very reason. Because I remember I did say at that time that what happened, although we had accepted it, but well, what happened was a prelude. We suspected it to be a prelude to more sinister motives. And we cautioned that in the course of trying to solve a particular problem that one party is afraid of, to afraid to confront, they may create a problem that no party or what the parties put together may not be able to solve. And uh, apparently our fears are beginning to be justified. Um, all these opposition to card reader wanting a shift in the date of the 
election and so on and so on. It's all coming from only one source. As for the 15 parties, I heard they said, uh, read in the papers that they said they will boycott the election. Wonderful idea. I wish they can carry out their threat. And that will reduce the election to a more manageable uh, proportion. The People's Democratic Party says the All Progressive Congress has questions to answer on the operations of an illegal radio station called Radio Chanje. Spokesman for the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, Femi Fani Kaudi, said at a news conference that the opposition plans to use the station to announce false results after the election. He added that the APC also intends using the radio stations to incite its supporters to violence. We'll bring you that report in a subsequent bulletin. As the political landscape continues to experience significant actions by politicians and other citizens as they count down to the general elections draw close, the Oyo State Governor, Abiola Jimobi, who recently got the endorsement of the State Association of Canada Riders, and new members who defected from different opposition parties to join the All Progressive Congress, has enjoined supporters to remain faithful by voting massively for his re election bid in office. Ajimobi also restated his commitment not to thrust out motorcycles in the state, saying those peddling rumors of an imminent ban are only threatened by the success of his administration. A correspondent Omotalo has more. <laughs> It was another important gathering for members of the All Progressives Congress in Oyo State, as to receive new members from other political parties like Accord, PDP, Labour, SDP and COA in the state, with promises and pledges to support Ajimobi's continuity headlong. A former Accord leader in Onwara local government, Waten, Oyewole Akokorere, says Ajimobi is an exemplary leader with excellent performance during his first term as governor and as such would love to be associated with him and be a part of such progress and good works. Our court led by La Doja, they are fully autocracy. That's why I decided to leave that uh, party. Leaders of Motorcycle Riders Association in the state say they endorse the incumbent governor for second term due to his tremendous contribution and has promised to protect their interests if he returns as governor. The governor has invited us and told us that there is nothing like that. He said that it's not going, it's not going to ban Okada in the state. Concerning the taxation, it happened sometimes six months ago, but immediately we let the governor know. He let them know that he didn't give them such things to do. So they, they stopped it immediately. If Ajimobi decides today that they want to cancel the that means, that means I'm not so, I'm not enjoying Ajimobi. Yeah, but, but, but so far, Ajimobi is not banding my, my working uh, this. I have to support Ajimobi to any length. Ajimobi expressed joy at the development, saying the new entrants and recent endorsement have increased his chances by 20%, thereby giving him an opportunity to win the state a second time. He also urged supporters to ignore propaganda messages by opposition. We stand for peace and security. We don't want to go back to the past. They should continue to go forward. Everybody prays to go forward. Nobody wants to go back, so they shouldn't go back. With a handful of citizens giving their nods to an APC-led government, what this percentage translates to remains a question to be answered at the poll. Omota Yualo, Court TV News, Ibadan. Johnson. Away from that, now the Borneo State Bond Pastor who accused the Christian Association of Nigeria of collecting seven billion from President Golok Jonathan to campaign against the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Muhammad Buhari. Alamo Musadiqwa has raised alarm over what he described as threats to his life by operatives of the Directorate of State Services. While insisting that the Christian body collected the said amount, Dikwa disclosed that the DSS have forced him to sign a document which they will use against him to prove to the entire world 
after the president, Jonathan, did not bribe Kant to work against the presidential candidate of APC. Dikwa said the DSS planned to use the document which he was made to sign under duress in some national dailies to portray him as telling lies against the body of Christ. The cleric noted that all these were in addition to plea uh, from other Christian leaders, especially the Abuja Khan chairman, to deny that the Christian body collected the said amount. The cleric, who spoke to newsmen in Kaduna, said that after the DSS operatives had treated him like a common criminal, they forced him to sign a document to deny what he had said. He added that since he broke the news to Nigerians of how the Christian body collected seven billion naira to work against Buhari, his life had been under threat. Dekwa explained that as soon as he finished addressing newsmen on the alleged bribe, DSS invited him to its headquarters in Abuja and asked him to say that uh, Khan did not collect a cover from the president. And now, Senate President David Mark is concerned over the level of devastation and killings in a back community of Agatu local government of Benue State after a recent invasion by a man suspected to be Fulani headsman. Mark, who was on the spot assessment of the wreckage, uh, liking what he saw to genocide. He said the action of the perpetrators is nothing but absolute criminality which must be addressed as such. The Senate president told his heartbroken constituents that President Golok Jonathan had during the last Security Council meeting set up a panel to investigate the mayhem. He therefore counseled the people to continue to maintain peace as government has enough apparatus to deal with this situation in a way that will bring justice to all concerned. Senator Mark also visited the makeshift tent housing some injured as survivors of the attack as well as internally displaced persons. He later visited the site where the murdered persons were said to have been given mass burial. Fuel scarcity has once again returned in Abuja, has long queues uh, noticeably in almost all petrol stations across the federal capital territory. This is less than a month after federal government and independent oil marketers resolved issues that led to the fuel scarcity in the country. Some motorists who spoke to court TV news in the nation's capital said the situation has caused panic buying among the residents. But C. Okafo has more in this report presented from our studios. It is another season of long fuel queues in the FCT. Attempts made by our news crew to speak with one of the station managers proved abortive. But these motorists who have spent hours searching for the scarce commodities say it is abnormal in a country that prides itself as an oil producing nation. It's a, it's a terrible situation. You understand? I've been on the queue for more than three hours now. Instead of me to just come in and buy within 10 minutes. So they should try and do something about it. Uh, in not less than two weeks, we are experiencing this thing. Also, the same this week. We don't even know the outcome of it. And we just come out yesterday and see the key, long queue everywhere. You understand? As a president of this country, you have to take a major as, uh, accurate aspect to know who behind this thing to tackle it. You understand? And what we are facing, that is not how it happens in other countries. We have this fuel and we are not seeing it. As the situation begins to bite harder, those who depend on fuel for their daily income are complaining of wasting man hours in search of the product. This is our matter, and it just, like, uh, it just be like a woman that just finished uh, cooking her food and later on sleep with her uh, hungry. How, how, how do you feel? So you can't enjoy the, the situation of the family. So that's how the, the thing just is. So we are, non, we are not enjoying at all. Though I spend uh, barely 20 minutes now, uh, 30 minutes rather, please. I, guess I spend barely 30 minutes now, and uh, this place is still better than some of the, uh, the filling stations around the central area. But the basic thing there is that I am a journalist too. I have to take the pain to leave my office to come and keep for four. Because when you look at the cost of the black market, it's about 2,000, 5,000, 3,000, 5, uh, 10 liters. 10 liters, I cannot take my car to anywhere. There are, however, speculations which tally with the position of security agencies on the actual cost of the latest round of shortage. I wouldn't know the cost, but they are saying that uh, they, would, they don't want people to carry fuel about during the election. The lines are getting longer going into the weekend, and this is in spite of assurances from the authorities of no cause for concern.
Meanwhile, security operatives are blaming the return of fuel queues in some parts of the country on the refusal by petrol tankers to load petroleum products from the south for distribution to the north of here of being caught in post-election violence. The Department of State Services disclosed this in a statement issued by its spokesperson, Marilyn Organ in Abuja. She, however, said heads of security agencies have ordered appropriate security cover for tanker drivers in the run-up to the election. Now, security operatives have arrested the wife of a suspected Boko Haram leader after a raid on the house in Kaduna Metropolis. They also recovered a number of arms and ammunition from the suspect's home. The raid was carried out by a combined team of soldiers and state security personnel on a Thursday night at Rafin Dadi Guza, a densely populated area. The suspected Boko Haram leader, identified as Mohamed Mai Baronu, was said to have escaped, but eyewitnesses confirmed to court TV news that his wife was taken into custody. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola said he will not stop working until his last day in office. Fashola, who spoke at a former commemoration of the Shogunro estate in Oba, which he also dedicated to the memory of late independence icon Antony Enahoro. Bajin Sajiboi was at the commemoration of the handover and brought back this report. Shogoro Estate, Ogba, is yet another housing scheme of the Lagos Home Ownership Mortgage Scheme, HOMS, birthed by the Fashola administration. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola says the housing scheme, which started when former governor of Lagos State, Latif Jakonde, was in office, will reduce housing deficits, encourage foreign investors, and has yielded about 5,000 jobs. 13 different construction companies, 13, were awarded the contracts to build all these blocks. They employed 30 engineers. There were 670 artisans working here. There were 780 casual laborers on this site. There were 120 various suppliers of gravel, of cement, of wood, of tires, of sanitation fittings and electrical fittings. There were 20 food vendors here during the whole construction period, selling food to workers on site every day. And of course, security. And then those were the direct jobs, the consequential jobs that this created, suppliers to suppliers and so on and so forth, is the total that we have received there. Now, those are our own job numbers. And I'm sure some of those contractors are here in our midst. Now, what are their own job numbers? The same minister tells you that they have created two million jobs across Nigeria. Very simple way to verify. You use the calculator <clears throat> Excuse me, use a calculator on your phone and divide 2 million by 37. That is the 36 states in Nigeria and Abuja. You will get around 50 something thousand people. Now ask yourself in Lagos has your husband, your son, your daughter, or somebody you know benefited from the 54,000 jobs that should have come here? He also canvassed for votes for governorship candidate of the APC saying the PDP candidate has no plans of employment for Lagosians. There are candidates in Lagos who is just kidding. <laughs> he says he will build low-cost houses. But when they ask him, he couldn't explain. He said he will build four blocks. They say, first of is already doing that. So what are you going to do differently? Because he's just kidding, he has no answer. He says he will do prefab. You know what prefab means? Importing prefabricated materials for housing here. He's going to take all your work. The housing estate has 20 blocks of 240 units of one, two, and three bedroom flats. Fashala also says construction is going on in 26 other sites in the state adding that funds used are not borrowed but are exclusively acquired from taxes paid. Patience, Ajiboe, Court TV News, Lagos.
You are still watching Court TV Prime Time News. We'll take another break now. We'll be back after this time with business, sport, and stories outside Nigeria. Stay with us. The power to change Nigeria is in your hands. Now is the time to go out and vote. Vote to Buhari, vote for change. Chandela Bibo, Kufwe to Guzapi, change. So you vote to give my camera was not supposed to be visible or to be around any polling unit unless there is a breakdown of law and order and they have been invited by the Inspector General of Police. That elections are shouted in Africa is no news. But in Nigeria, it comes with consequences. Against the will of one man. Consequences that have toggled the nation's politics and may shape how Nigeria elects. This is the year of PGP. The momentum gathers. When we promise, we deliver. The fireworks is unending. We did it and we continue to do it. 55 years this year, and in the fourth republic, this is Nigeria's fifth general elections. All the action, all the news, the update. And the news behind the news, who will bring to you live from the field and in the studio on Core TV News as Nigeria elects. In business now, the Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce has blamed. A failed and abandoned project littering every nook and cranny of the country and government's policy at Somerset. The president of NBCC, Prince Adiemi Adifulu, made this assertion during a breakfast meeting organized by the chamber in Lagos. He said national experience has shown that government is a bad business manager and that the country will have been better off if an enabling environment was created. Tax incentives, established soft long term loans, extended in deserving cases, and the expert allowed to get going with the jobs. And now the Institute of Credit Administrators, ICA Nigeria, has called parties involved in credit transactions to be guided by a sense of value and ethics, uh, stating that regulation alone is not enough for effective credit administration. ICA was set up in 1992 in response to a last credit system characterized by a number of unethical business practices which were negatively affecting business cash flows. President Chairman of Council ICA, Aditu Joe Ibadji, said this at a press briefing prior to the inauguration of ICA's third governing council in Lagos over the weekend. He noted that the present situation of credit loss has evidenced a gap in hope that should be occupied by values. Let's now join Sabena Izoku for a report of happenings on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Court TV News Stock Market Report. Hello there and welcome to the Stock Market Report segment with me, Sabena Izuku. Equity transaction on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today as the Nigerian All Shares Index appreciated by 0.31% to close at 29,334.23 basis points. The market capitalization increased to close at 9.78 trillion naira. In all, the total volume of 165 million units of shares valued at 2 billion naira were exchanged in 3,200. 211 deals. Meanwhile, on the gainer side, Nestle top the gainer's chart closed at 829 naira 50 carbo with 29 naira 50 carbo price difference, followed by 40 all, 7 up, Guaranteed Trust Bank, and Nigerian Brewers. On the flip side, Pizza Cars and Top, the loser's chart, followed by Zenith Bank, Union Bank of Nigeria, Ashika Cement, and Diamond Bank. Meanwhile, First Bank of Nigerian Holdings stopped the traders' chart, followed by First City Monument Bank, Zenith Bank, Guaranteed Trust Bank, and UBA Capital. Just before we wrap up the stock market report, here's the currency trade for today. Court TV News Stock Market Report.
And in sports now, the seventh FIFA Women's World Cup match between Nigeria and Australia at the Winnipeg Stadium in the city of Winnipeg on June 12 has been sold out. Organizers confirm on Friday a 29,000 seat venue is located in the capital city of the state of Manitoba, which is located in the center of Canada. As Super Falcons will take on the Matilda starting from 4 p.m. Canada time with USA to take on Sweden at the same venue three hours later. Nigeria champions of Africa will have played Sweden at the same venue four days earlier and will also play USA in Vancouver on June 16 in their last match of Group D. And out in Nigeria Premier League continues this weekend with Wiki Tories taking on Quarrel United on Saturday, uh, while matches slated for Sunday are Renyimba versus Bayosa United, FC Taraba versus Lobby Stars, Sharks versus Aqua United, and Gabos FC versus Rangers, Gewa FC versus Sunshine Stars, Al Kanemi Warriors versus Abia Warriors, and Hotland versus Nasra United. And now to the European Premier League now. The English Premier League this weekend will see a Manchester City side play host to West Bromwich Albion on Saturday. As City looks to increase their grip on the league title after being hosted from the UEFA Champions League earlier this week. Matches also slated for Saturday include Tottenham Hotspur versus Leicester Lis City, Stoke City versus Crystal Palace, Sultantin versus Burnley, Newcastle versus Arsenal, Aston Villa versus Swansea City, West Ham United versus Sunderland. On Sunday, Liverpool will play host to Manchester United, a Quink Park Rangers will take on Everton, while House City will play Chelsea. And now outside Nigeria now, millions of people in the UK and Northern Europe have claimed the best solar eclipse in year. A great swift of the Earth's surface was plunged into darkness as the moon came between humanity and the sun. From an aeroplane above the Faroe Island, a camera crew captured startling footage of the event reaching totality at 9.41 at GMT. The deep shadow formed first in the North Atlantic and then swept up into the Arctic ending at the North Pole. And now the two extremist gunmen were killed 21 people at a museum in Tunis Strait in the neighboring Libya before carrying out the deadly attack atop a Tunisian security official site. Wednesday's attack of the National Battle Museum killed 21 people, 17 of them cruise ship tourists before the two gunmen were killed in a firefight with security forces. The attack of such magnitude in Tunisia, the only country to emerge from the 2011 Arab of spring uprisings with a functioning democracy raised concern about the spread of extremism to the rest of North Africa. Rafik Cherli, the Interior Ministry's top security official, said the attackers had slipped out of Tunisia in December and received weapons training in Libya before returning home. The Islamic State group based in Iraq and Syria has claimed responsibility for the battle attack. Several well armed groups in Libya, which borders Tunisia, have pledged their allegiance to Islamic State. Uh, that's all in court TV uh, uh, tonight. And now, the, this is still court TV prime time news. Just before we go tonight, a recap of our top stories. We told you that President Golub Jonathan says he is not bothered by reports written about him in recent times and says he is not desperate to remain in office. We also told you that Eagles in the 19 Northern State and the FCT endorsed the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Muhammad Buhari. And finally, combined team of security forces raid home a suspected leader of the terror group Boko Haram in Kaduna, Nabd Wife. And that's it on Court TV Primetime News tonight. Many thanks for watching. I am Frank of Malape. On behalf of the entire news crew, 
Have a good day at rest.